Believe it or not, I think Bernard really has made believers out of all of us. When you look at his string of victories against Trinidad, when he won the middleweight tournament, a lot of people did not believe he could do it, but he made believers out of them. When he went on to fight uh, Antonio Tarver for the light heavyweight championship, again, a lot of people said he can't do it. He made them believer. When he went on to go and fight the young and undisputed Kelly Pavlik, uh, a lot of people again said, no, he can't do it. But you know what? He made them believers. And when he went uh, earlier this year to become the oldest champion in boxing, the oldest champion in any sport at age almost 47, a lot of people said it's impossible. You can't do that. But he did it again and he made us all believers. So here we are. What a perfect promotion. It doesn't really get much better than that. But Ripley's, believe it or not, it's the perfect title. And Ripley's, the famous, uh, the famous uh, brand with museums uh, and locations all over the world, the global brand, they became believers. They became believers when they actually cast uh, Bernard Hopkins and the, the figure, the Bernard Hopkins figures will be on display during fight week here. So uh, Bernard Hopkins will have a permanent place in the Believe It section of the Or Not. <laughs> and so we are all positive people here. We are all believers. I think all of us by now believe and know that Bernard Hopkins again will be victorious in his first, in his historic first title defense of the world title he won. I think there are like a couple people here which are the or nots, which is Gary Shaw and uh, his fighter uh, Chad Dawson, but I can assure you they will believe it as well at the, at the end of October, the, at the night, end of the night of October the 15th. Don't be negative, okay? <laughs> we talked about that before. <laughs> This promotion is just called not. <laughs> the difference between Richard Schaefer and myself and everything he was espousing here is he just became a believer in Bernard Hopkins. I know Bernard Hopkins from when he started his career, and he'll tell you that, and I have a lot of respect for him. I've always been a believer in Hopkins. He's done amazing things in boxing, done amazing things for the sport, and obviously some amazing things for himself. But on October 15th at Staples, his run comes to an end. It's called not. The trouble with this side of the table is they're delusional. They, they think that because Ripley's had some extra wax, that this fight in Hopkins became bigger. Let me remind you of something that everybody believed in. We all remember just a very short time ago, the Miami Heat, when they spent hundreds of millions of dollars believing that they were walking away with the NBA trophy. That's this side of the table. We're here from Dallas. Last I remember, Dallas held up that trophy. So one side could believe, but the answer is not. Chad Dawson, you will see a brand new Chad Dawson. Hopkins has never faced anybody with the speed of Chad Dawson, with the jab of Chad Dawson, or the combinations of Chad Dawson. Bernard Hopkins, friend or not, ran from Chad Dawson for a long time. And it took certain things within boxing to happen. It took Dawson to lose to Pascal, Pascal to fight Hopkins, for us to step aside and and Hopkins to have the rematch with Pascal to bring us all here today. That's the history. And if that history didn't happen, Bernard Hopkins would never want to fight Chad Dawson. But you're in for a great treat. He is a great fighter. On October 15th, I have the better fighter. The undercard is spectacular. I believe it's 50-50. And I'm going to bring up my fighter first with your okay to, to speak. His name is Antonio DeMarco. When I got Antonio, he was a little known fighter. Had a few fights, then lost a the fight because he was sick. 
and then came back to fight the great Valero, who's now deceased in Mexico. He's had his wars, he's had his time. Linares is a great two-time champion. I truly believe this is a 50-50 fight, and I have all the confidence in Antonio DeMarco. So I'd la like to bring up Antonio right now with his manager, who's going to interpret as well, Jorge Marone. Bueno, primero que nada, buenas, buenos días todavía. Buenos días aquí a todos los presentes. Hi, everybody. You know, first of all, you know, if you want to say uh, good morning, everybody. I think it's says morning right now. Eh, voy a hablar poco porque no es lo mío. Está el micrófono. Eh, lo único que vengo a decir es solo palabras de agradecimiento a mi promotora Gary Chao y a Golden Boy por haber hecho este encuentro y darme la oportunidad. I want to talk a little bit. It's not, I'm going to talk a too much, you know, but I want to say I appreciate uh, Gary Shaw, my promoter, and a Golden Boy, you know, for giving this opportunity. Y agradecerle también a, a mi compañero de trabajo, que es Jorge Linares, porque es compañero de trabajo, para mí no es mi rival. I want to say thank you to Jorge Linares, you know, it's my partner in work, you know, so that's what I want to say thank you to him. Y lo único que pasa por mi cabeza en este momento es ganar y ser el mejor, como alguna vez me lo recordó mi abuelo. Si vas a ser panadero, ser el mejor del mundo. Si vas a ser boxeador, ser el mejor del mundo. Y es lo que voy a tratar de hacer el 15 de octubre, coronarme campeón del mundo, porque es el sueño de todo boxeador y el sueño que siempre he querido lograr. Uh, first, uh, Uh, I want to say, you know, first of all, you know, I want to be a world champion, you know, because my grandpa, he told me, you know, if you want to be a boxer, you know, you have to be one of the best. And uh, I think, you know, it's my point to win this title. Uh, so, you know, to be the one of the best boxers. Y como digo siempre, muchas gracias a toda la gente que ha seguido mi carrera y que me sigue y que me ha apoyado en las buenas y en las malas. And I want to say thank you for everybody you know support my career you know and in, uh, in the good times and the bad times and uh, the only thing I would like to say is thank you. Y esta pelea va para toda mi gente mexicana, para todos los mexicanos y todos los fanáticos de este boxeo que no se pierdan esta pelea, va a ser un gran combate. This fight will dedicate to my people, to Mexican people, and uh, for everybody, you know, uh, for you know, my whole, you know, fanatic people, you know, and uh, don't lost to see this fight. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Que Dios lo bendiga a todos. Uh, thank you. God bless you, everybody. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, the the Marco is going to fight Jorge Linares. Jorge Linares is one of the most accomplished uh, fighters 20 for a 25 year young fighter. He's already been a two time uh, world champion. Uh, his um, success was a bit derailed in 2009 when he suffered the loss, but he came back since with consecutive wins and he's ready for challenge to challenge for that World Boxing Council uh, World Championship again. He uh, is uh, co-promoted by Mr. Honda from Taikan Promotions. I'd like to acknowledge him. Uh, he recently uh, moved out here to Los Angeles, is full-time now in Los Angeles, and is trained by the famous Freddie Roach from the Wildcard Gym uh, and his strength and conditioning trainer, Alex Ariza. I don't know if Alex is here or... Oh, there he is, okay. <laughs> Um, Alex Ariza, of course, uh, has been uh, in charge of the uh, strength and conditioning for Manny Pacquiao uh, and for Amir Khan as well, and now for Jorge Linares as well. He's uh, one of the most accomplished uh, strength and conditioning coach and trainers uh, in the business. He's involved, as I understand, with uh, some of the Lakers as well, including uh, Andrew Bynum, right? And so he really is, uh, he knows, uh, 
he knows when it comes to sports to get his athletes ready better than no other and I'd like to introduce to you now Alex Arisa. Thanks everybody for showing up, first of all. Um, as always, Golden Boy card is going to be exciting. They put on the best fights. Um, uh, we just got Linares about three weeks ago, and this has probably been, it's been a while since we've seen somebody with, with so much talent walk in. Freddie's just so impressed with him. Um, I'm so crazy about him that I moved him in with me, and. Uh, just to focus on him for this fight. Uh, we know that this is a big fight for him. Um, so we're just getting ready for it. Uh, I think everybody's gonna be surprised when they see him, the type of skill. Um, like again, we haven't seen a boxer like this in such a long time that's walked into, into the wild card. Uh, the speed, power, um, boxing technique. Um, so I think everybody's gonna be really surprised when they see him. And uh, I know that he uh, is focusing right now on this fight and uh, well, we're definitely not taking DeMarco lightly. I think everybody knows we don't take any of our opponents lightly. We'll show up, we come to win, we'll come to war and I think it's going to be a great fight and um, oh and first uh, I forgot, <laughs> Freddie apologizes that he couldn't be here. He's with the Olympic team right now um, but uh, so anyway thanks everybody for showing up and uh, expect a great fight on October 15th. Thank you, Alex. It's a pleasure for me to introduce to you now the former WBA Super Featherweight World Title Holder, the former WBC Featherweight World Champion, and the next WBC World Champion, Jorge El Nino de Oro Linares. Mm. Bueno, primero que nada, buenos días. Eh... Pues contento no de solamente estar acá, sino también de, de tener dos oportunidades en la vida en este momento. First of all, I want to say thank you um, to everybody and to it's like a dream uh, to be here today and, and have this opportunity to fight. Primero que era tener la oportunidad de venirme a Los Ángeles. Tengo ocho años haciendo carrera en Japón y estar acá en Estados Unidos es uno de mis sueños, ¿no? Y estar en el Will Card con, con Freddy y ahora pues con Alex Ariza como preparador físico es algo que, que siempre soñaba y se está haciendo realidad y eso es lo que, lo que me motiva y, y lo que nos va a llegar a, a ser otra vez campeón mundial. Uh, for me, it's been a, a dream to always come here to the United States. I've been in Japan for the last eight years, um, but uh, it's been even more exciting for me to be here with working with Freddy Roach. Um, myself and uh, getting ready, uh, preparing myself physically and mentally for this fight. Um, again, this has always been a dream of mine to fight here in the United States. Quiero darle eh, las gracias no solamente a Golden Boy Promotions, sino también a, a Taken y ahora pues al Will Card. Y también pues agradecido de, de estar en esta gran función entre el mismo Hawking, ¿no? que hace años atrás también estuve en la misma función, también peleando como por el título del consejo, eh, no sé si recuerdan contra Larios, así que de verdad que es algo maravilloso y sé que vamos a salir muy victoriosos esta noche, el 15 de octubre. Um, again, I want to not only just thank Golden Boy, I want to thank Tekken. Um, it's an honor to be fighting on a card with Bernard Hopkins. I fought on a card, I think, once before when, he fought, when I fought Lar Larios. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm coming to win, and it's going to be a great night and a great fight for, for, for me. Sé que muchas personas y fanáticos se, se están preguntando y se siguen preguntando por qué estamos acá en, en Los Ángeles y, y por qué dejamos eh, eh, en, este, en este caso pues la gente de allá de Japón. No, no lo hemos dejado, sino que venimos a trabajar co, como lo es, como, como, como queremos, como en los grandes. no eh, Lo he nombrado muchas veces, estamos en las grandes ligas del boxeo y por eso estoy acá en Estados Unidos. Eh, no tengo en contra de nada con mi gente de Japón, lo sigo queriendo, tengo que darle el agradecimiento y el apoyo a toda esa gente y estoy aquí para crecer, para crecer en el deporte, para crecer como un campeón mundial y de verdad que gracias por ese apoyo y a toda la gente que me sigue en el Twitter también. Um, 
first of all, he wants to say thank you to, to Japan and for all the uh, support that they're giving him. It's, it was, you know, it's hard leaving them, but, you know, this, he came here to the United States to grow, to move forward, and to be, to make himself uh, a star in this, in, this, in this sport. So thank you to them, um, and thank you for all their support. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, and yeah, I'm gonna win. I'm coming here to win. <laughs> bueno, y por último, eh, ya me tengo que ir, tengo que entrenar. Eh, de verdad que gracias por estar aquí todos los medios de comunicación, a toda la gente. Eh, espero que asistan el día 15 y sé que van a, van a apreciar una gran, una gran pelea. Nuevamente me voy a coronar campeón mundial. Y pues un gran saludo también a, a mi rival de Marcos. De verdad que gracias por esa oportunidad también. Well. Thanks. Um, in closing, I want to just thank everybody for being here. Um, I have to go run and train now, and um, it's going to be a great night. It's going to be a great card, and I want to say thank you to Demarco uh, for for showing up and and signing the agreement to fight. And uh, but he will not disappoint on the 15th. Ripley's is honored to be a part of Bernard's journey, as he is a true, believe it or not. Amongst Bernard's endless list of achievements at the age of 46, he is the world's oldest champion in boxing history, believe that or not. Ripley's will immortalize Bernard Hopkins with his very own wax figure and that will be unveiled during fight week. Following the fight, Bernard's wax figure will be a part of Bernard Hopkins' exhibits at one of our very own Ripley's Auditorium Museums. Over and we're making space for you here on the Believe It side. Okay? Yes! <laughs> so, Bernard Hopkins is our true, believe it or not. Chad Dawson turned pro in 2001 and won his first title at age only 24. Since that time, he's never looked back and he will be a great challenger for our very own, believe it or not, Bernard Hopkins. In 1918, Robert Ripley, an illustrator for a small newspaper, published his first cartoon, Champs or Chumps. Now, almost 100 years later, we're going to find out exactly who is the champ and who is the chump. So congratulations to both of you, and we wish you guys both luck. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Hey, over there. Come on, we moved you over there. See, we're making believers. Pretty soon they'll be moving over there too. <laughs> By the time we're done with the press conference, we're gonna have to add two more chairs over here. But uh, on that note, it really is a pleasure to ask uh, my good friend uh, Gary Shaw to come up to the podium again and introduce uh, Team Dawson. Thank you, Richard. First, I wanna introduce um, Chad's son, Prince Chadwick who I, stand up Prince, who I recently signed, <laughs> and Herman Woodard, our attorney and, and advisor, thank you for being here. Um, Andrea, a couple of words to you. First of all, the 1800s was a long time, I mean this respectfully, there's never a chump in boxing, any boxer who gets in the ring is a champion, just one leaves with the belt and the title, the other does not. Now, suggestion to you, so Ripley's Believe It Not can stay in business. I will have matches for you at the end of the fight, so you could melt the wax of Bernard Hopkins. And to Tim Lywicki, we're expecting a statue right next to Oscar of Chad. Ours will be in bronze, never to be melted. Again, it's hot here. I know Bernard needs about two hours to talk, we need to get out of here because we have to catch a flight for a press conference for tomorrow in New York in front of Ripley's, believe it or not. Not. So, Bernard, I want to leave you with these words. Not. 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 Will never happen. You're a good looking guy. You look about 26, but your reign is over on October 15th, and I know that you will be a gentleman when they put the WBC belt around Chad Dawson once again. I thank you for taking the fight. Nazim, thank you, you're a hell of a trainer. Richard, you're a good partner. You're gonna not do very well on October 15th, 
We're going to have a jacket made. Whoever wins the most fights, Gary Shore Productions or Golden Boy, will leave with the jacket. It'll be a little green, not WBC green or the Masters, but... It will be a golden jacket. <laughs> it'll be a golden jacket filled with money from Oscar to me and Richard to me. So I thank you. I'd like to bring up my fighter, who I really believe is the great 175-pound champion. He will be the champion on October 15th. My, my good friend, my fighter, and I believe a future Hall of Famer behind Bernard Hopkins, who's definitely going into the Hall of Fame, and that's bad Chad Dawson. How's everybody doing out there today? Uh, I don't have too much to say, you know. I'm, I'm just excited to be here. I still pinch myself every day when I wake up. I can't believe this fight is really about to happen. I mean, everybody who knows me know I've been chasing Bernard for about three years now. I always wanted this fight. And it was funny when I lost to Pascal, which was one of my worst nights in boxing. Two days later, I think, Bernard called out Pascal and said he wanted the Pascal fight. I mean, I was hurt because, you know, that was a fight I wanted for so long. And he got the fight. It was a great fight. The first fight was a good fight. I thought Bernard won the first fight. The second fight, Bernard dominated him. But you know, like I said, on that night, that wasn't that wasn't Chad Dawson. I'm a, I'm a different person. No more. I'm, I'm problem free. I'm stress free. My life is great. I just had a new baby boy on Monday morning. Uh, my son Prince is here. I got four. I got four little boys at home to take care of. So I mean, to me, this is this is this is all or nothing. You know. So I'm going. I'm going into this like you know, it's the end of my career, end of my life. So I mean. This side of the table, the, the believers, you know, they can believe what you want, but believing is believing is believing what you can do. But at the, on October 15th, you have to get in the ring. You have to show everybody what you can really do. And on the 15th, I'm going to get in the ring, and I'm I'm really going to show everybody I'm better than Bernard Hopkins. I'm one of the best fighters in the world. And you know, and, and as far as um, as far as this fight goes, and, and the build up and anticipation, you know, it's great. You know, you know, some, some people say they don't think it's pay per view meant for pay per view. It's not made for pay per view, but. On I tour 15 is gonna be my night. And, you know, can nobody take that another way from me? Bernard, nobody. At this side of the table, I'm not worried about that side of the table. I'm worried about what I'm gonna do to get ready for this fight. I'm worried about the 15 when they put the belts around my waist. I'm worried about. I'm thinking about what I'm gonna say to the world. Everybody who doubted me, who put me down when I lost to Pascal. Everybody who said I wasn't a big puncher. Everybody who said I was. I was a boring fighter. Everybody. I'm, I'm bringing all of that into the ring on I tour 15. Believe me. Thank you. One last thing I forgot, because Bernard, you've always stepped up your game every fight and every year of your career. And I was at your fight with Pascal when you did the push-ups in the ring. And I got to tell you, I was really impressed. So the fact that you're going to step it up against Chad, I assume you'll do the push-ups and at least 10 to 20 jumping jacks in between each round. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Time now to introduce to you Team Hopkins. His longtime trainer, who has been with him uh, in, in most of his big victories, been with him forever, is Nassim Richardson. He's one of the most accomplished trainers. It's a pleasure for me to introduce to you Brother Nassim. Assalamu alaikum. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out in this heat and supporting this great promotion. It's a pleasure to be here. And, you know, it's really an honor to work with an athlete of the magnitude of Bernard because he's not just a great fighter. He hasn't just been a great champion. But those of you who've known him for years realize he's been one of the outstanding personalities in boxing as, as we've been searching for someone to lead the reign. And these young guys like Chad Dawson, I've known Chad since he was a kid. He's a special kid. I knew it way back then. When he's a young man, I took him to tournaments. He's outstanding. always been an outstanding fighter. I know him since his baby, his brothers and everything. So I take nothing away from him in that sense that I have nothing but respect for him. But when you speak of Bernard Hawkins, you can only speak of, the, uh, speak of the utmost respect because of what this gladiator has done for so long and so consistent. Some athletes are outstanding in the ring, but they fall short outside of the ring. Some people have their problems amongst the, 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 the social network. You've never seen any bad write-ups about Bernard Hopkins. You've never heard anything negative about him in the press. This guy has been one of the great characters in our sport and, and a sport that needs that right now. 
and he is still going on being one of the pioneers. So we appreciate him. His team around him has always supported him as we always will. Kelly Swanson, well, I think Kelly will put the gloves on and go in there herself if she has to. She's willing to fight Bernard as we all stand for him and, and support him in the sense. Richard Schaefer and the Golden Boy promotions, when people thought it was going to fall, they're still standing tall. You know what I mean? And like I said, and if there's a statue that has to go anywhere else, Philadelphia, anywhere else, we have to recognize a Bernard Hopkins. For those of you who remember old timers talking about Ray Robinson and when they saw Ray Robinson and when you hear them speak of the magistrate when they talk about Ray Robinson, this is the time you're living in now with Bernard Hopkins. Don't overlook it and then later on when your kids and your grandkids are asking you about this man, you know, you're going to be able to say, I saw him, I was there. That's why I please ask everybody, come out and see him in person. Because like I said, like the great Ray Robinson, this is our Ray Robinson of our era right now, any way you want to look at it. Bernard Hopkins is the greatest athlete of the last couple of years. A lot of guys do it well for a minute. Very few can do it as long and consistent as he's done it. And I will tell you this much, the only reason I wasn't able to jump up there and put my foot in his behind when he was doing push-ups, because I was moving up the steps a little too slow. <laughs> Because so, so regardless of what Gary says, he know I, I who didn't holler. I don't want us. My guys got no business doing push-ups in the middle of the ring. And I find that any young athlete that wants to try to emulate anything of that nature, give us 20 title defenses first. Then we have no problem with you doing push-ups. But anybody else, put the work in that this man has put in. We can't hold nothing but respect for him. I appreciate you for your time and your patience. Thank you. Welcome home, Bernard. In 2005, he fought here uh, at Staples Center and made history. It was actually the first fight under the Golden Boy banner when Bernard became a partner at Golden Boy and that was his legendary 20th middleweight world championship defense against Howard Eastman. Almost 14,000 people came out to cheer him on here. So this is your home, Bernard Hopkins. And it's good to have you back in Los Angeles. I said it before, I don't have to go through it again, we all know what he has accomplished. He really is one of the greatest athletes of our time. To be able to look at his resume and see what he has done over the last 20 or so years is absolutely amazing. And for me, every time when I stand on the podium and I have the pleasure and the honor to introduce this legend, it really gives me the chills because we, we appreciate what you do, Bernard. We appreciate it and we will appreciate it again on October the 15th. Please, all of you, welcome the legendary, the executioner, Bernard Hopkins. First, it's good to be uh, Good to be back in LA. Um, I'm normally here three times a year, but it's good to be back here as a as a main event fighter at this stage of my long, long, great career. To be able to come on the West Coast and also real feel the love that I have here is unbelievable because people respect boxing, they respect heart too, and they respect skill. And to come here to be able to display that on the other side of the tracks is, is, is very, very respectful for me. So thanks to the fans, all the fans back there, everybody. I, I heard a couple of things that Chad Dawson said, but I also heard a couple of things that he said in the past and, and Gary Shaw about not fighting or they wanted to fight. Whether that's true or not, it's too hot to debate it out here, believe it or not. <laughs> but this couldn't have been a better time than even three years ago. Think about it. Um, he making he's, he should and he will make more money than he would have made three years ago because I brought sight excitement back to the division. <laughs> Ever since my split decision stick up with Joe Gazaki, the light heavyweight division basically stalled. I mean, let's be honest. When Pascal called me out, because Chad said I called him out, if anybody remember that fight, Pascal said I want Bernard Hopkins. Now, I don't mind being grandpa, because I was home in my rocking chair, teeth in a glass, 
minding my business. And I accept the challenge. But I, I know that, you know, Chad said he got four sons, and I respect people, family, but what's going to happen in the ring, I don't think kids will watch it, especially his, because this could be painful, it could be traumatizing. Seriously. Therapy comes into play. A lot of things happen when young people don't understand why this is happening to somebody they love. It's part of our business. It's not personal. But I have to prove, which I don't mind, over and over again, why I say I'm special. I don't need the writers, I don't need anybody saying it. I expect the, the compliments, but at the end of the day, I said this then and I'll say it now. For those who've been writing about me for many, many years, um, understand and know for a fact, cloud, loud and clear, loud and clear, I have always said that I'm a show and time now reveals that. But I'm looking to put on a great show. I'm looking to defend the title. I got another mission. Believe it or not, I have another history, historic record breaking itch on my shoulders. To my knowledge, Doug Fisher can correct me if I'm wrong, I might be off one or two. Archie Moore won a championship at light heavyweight at 47, maybe 48. I think I'm around about close. And I believe he defended it successfully over three or four times. Now this is the second time I've been down this road. I've been light heavyweight champion once before, undisputed. And this is the second time around. I didn't put life back in the division of light heavyweight division. It stalled when I left, or when Joe Gazaki won the title. So I'm glad that now we get a chance to fight, and we get a chance to prove that, be careful what you ask for. Um, I believe I'm a better fighter than I, I was two, three years ago. I believe if I know that if Chad Dawson come with everything he just said just now, y'all gonna get every bit of, bit of that $55 or $50 I gotta pay if you're home, if you come, y'all gonna get every bit of it. Because that was a preview of the last two fights with Gene Pascal. One thing about being great, Chad, because Gary already knows, he's been in his business for a long time. As he said, we know each other over 10 years. He mentioned something, and I listen to what people say, he tells you how they think and how they feel most of the time. Doesn't necessarily give you a whole report card. And he said something, and this is something I always pay attention to. And I know when people say something just to throw you off or say something just to say, to say something, just to say, just to say it. But he was right. He wanted to say why he didn't look his best that night. Maybe that's true. But one thing about great champions amongst fighters or amongst just having a championship belt, that's one thing to have a belt. There's so many out there. Y'all know it's five belts in these divisions, maybe six, right, though? Yeah. Okay. So be champion is okay, but it's, you don't raise your eyebrows up too much because you got to do above and beyond that now. But he mentioned that the reason, sort of, or he hinted around that, that the reason that he looked bad that night because he had a lot of problems. You know how many times I fought with problems? I used good and bad to realize that the fight can be still won, even though it might be personal, even though it might be you got a flat tire, your dog ran off the lawn and got hit. At the end of the day, that's what separates certain mentalities and certain great athletes from the Michael Jordans, from this guy, from Bernard Hopkins, from this era, from Ray Robinson, from that era, Hagler, from that era, Ali, from his era, 60s. Because to me, I'm not gonna say real fighters because he is a real fighter. But that's the separation between his mentality and my mentality. I don't care what, what I go through, it could be a storm. I'm gonna transform that into energy to take care of my business that night. Even personal, non-personal, I don't care what it is. It doesn't affect what I have to do. Now, as far as chumps or champs, Gary Shaw tried to correct you and said there's no chumps as long as they step in the ring and fight. There is a correction with that. There are chumps. But I believe that anybody that's signed to go in there to fight, start off as a champion, as far as having a heart to do it. That's a different type of champion. 
But you become a chump when you don't do what you say. You become a chump when you go in there and you get hit and don't get up knowing that you can. See, you go in there, you get a pass. It's called points. You start off with points because you had enough courage to get in the ring, but it takes a lot to go through adversity and don't become a chump. So I wanted to not bail you out, but I wanted to give Gary the, my definition that chump do exist in boxing, even though you're a fighter. You just don't get a pass and get the green light because you just happen to get your license and say you got a couple of fights. There's gonna be times in a fight where you're gonna have to separate yourself, whether you're a champion, a fighter, or a chump. And lately in boxing, not mentioning names, we've seen a lot of chumps. <laughs> Y'all watch like I watch. I ain't, gotta, I ain't throwing nobody in the bus. But one thing about this sport, they do separate the chumps from the champ. So you were correct. Now I gave you something in case you challenge again with that. So thanks for standing in the sun to witness again, if it's not Chad Dawson who has to prove that he belongs here, and I'm have to prove that I'm special over and over again, and I don't mind that, then October 15th, I won't disappoint you. I won't disappoint you, and I just don't want this man to disappoint you either. Why? Because I could be a great dancer, but if my partner ain't dancing with me, y'all, I'm gonna step on his feet or he gonna step on mine. So to make a good fight, because I don't want to look like a bully. I don't want no one out there saying, oh, you know, Bernard was in the penitentiary, he's beating the guy, he's scaring the guy, he's getting in the guy's head. If somebody get in your head, because now that's an excuse, for some people to say that I've accomplished things that I accomplished because Bernard got in a fighter's head and that's how he won the fight. Well, if somebody can get in your head, then you're not a real fighter. If a fighter can get in your head and win and dictate the fight without throwing a punch, then how can you call yourself a fighter? How can you call yourself anything if somebody can beat you out of a championship without touching you? So don't go for that crap that because I'm who I am or I got past this hurdle or that hurdle because Bernard intimidated a guy. At the end of the day, Chad Dawson will have to prove that chasing me as he say, ducking him as he says, he get a chance to now prove that. And if he comes with his A game, I'm gonna come with my A game. I'm telling you right now, the outcome is the outcome. I know how I feel, he says how he feel, fine but I'm not backing up and he's gonna have to fight and he never seen anything like this before. Trust me, he's gonna tell you this. He's never seen anything in that ring. Outside is deceiving, but in that ring, he's gonna see what a teacher means, what a teacher means. So I wanna show him something that can take him further, hopefully, Hopefully in his career, because we all know, without mentioning no names, no blame, that just because you step in the ring with Bernard, you might learn something, but you might not have anything left to show. There are some fighters, no name, no blame, that even though they learned something, they never recuperated mentally. See, I beat you in the ring mentally, and then physically, it's gonna happen, but mentally, I take something out of you that you will never be the same. That's the risk he takes. So he's quicker, I think he's 29, he's in his 20s, I hope he ain't 30, because then that'd be a letdown to me, because I want, I want the 20 year olds. I don't want nobody that's, that's close to 40. I want the young bucks. You know, they young, strong, right? I like the young bucks, man. If I fight someone close to my age, Richard, oh, he fought another old man. Okay, I like the young bucks, Chad. Chad is a young buck, you know what I mean? Strong, ambitious, want to prove something. He want to be on the throne. I want to motivate as much as possible. It's going to be a lot of real talking over the next nine weeks, if my math is right, nine, 10 weeks. Because this is pay-per-view, right? So we can't go through this thing waltzing through, thinking people's going to get excited because the way we look. We don't have that uh, easy on our eyes look, both of us, but we all right. So if we want to sell this, we got to say things that we really mean. Am I right? Kelly, am I, you the publicist? We can't be saying this is pay-per-view. So Chad, come out of character, man, a little bit. I mean, don't, don't be easy with my shirt. 
But let's sell this thing, man, and mean what we sell, though. And do what we say when we get in the ring. Thanks for being patient, y'all. And it's going to be a great fight. October 15th, Staples Center. History going to be made that night. That's all I can tell you. Thank you. I'm going to say what we mean. All that, you are the best at talking shit, but all that shit ain't going to help you on October 15th. And I make you a promise. When that bell rings, Chad Dawson's going to be all over your ass. Young or old, get ready for a fight, buddy. The fight it will be right here, October 15th, Staples Center. That's what I'm talking about. Make history. That's what I'm For as little as $25 right here at Staples He's Center. Alive. We'll see you then. Thank you.